Okay, so I'm glad to have made it this far, but between here and my next safe spot, there are 16 different paths that I can take. So let's maybe lay out those paths, maybe not so much in a grid, but I could take one of these 16 paths. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that'll be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now there are 16 paths. So for instance, I could take the path through here or I could take the path through here, or I could take the path through here, so on and so forth. And due to some like nice data that another person in the resistance found for me, there's exactly one infected between here and the safe spot along one of those paths, I should say. So perhaps the infected is right here, perhaps the infected is down here, perhaps the infected is here. I don't know where this infected is, but I know that there's only one of them. Okay, so now let's first think about what are the chances that I interact with the infected between here and my next safe spot? Well, if the infected is randomly chosen along one of these paths, and I randomly choose one of these paths, then there is a 1 over 16 chance that I interact with an infected. Okay, but really what's important is the chance that I get bit. So, I'm pretty fit, and I think I could fight off an infected or run from an infected maybe about two-thirds of the time if I interact with them. So that means that the chance that I'm bit if I interact with an infected is one third. So if I, for instance, go through this square right here and I interact with an infected, there's a one third chance that I'll be bit and thus become infected on my own. So using the multiplicative property of probabilities, that means the chance that I get bit, so the probability that I am bit on this path from here to my next safe space is 1 over 16 times 1 over 3 or 1 over 48. Now in the normal times, I wouldn't want to put my life on that sort of probability, but in the apocalypse like we are right now, I think that's a pretty good probability. Okay, so now from here, let's move on out to see if we can make it to our next safe spot. So let's extrapolate that probability that we determined at the last safe spot to the probability that any given human gets bit by any given maybe infected. And I guess I mean like the probability that I get bit by a certain fixed infected person or the probability that you get bit by another fixed infected person. Well, let's say that the probability of that happening is similar to the probability that we found for me on my last trip. So in other words, that'll be one over 48 from that 16 times three. So now let's use that to see the expected number of new infected in a day. Assuming that this probability is for each day. Okay, so how might we do that? Well, notice it's going to be the probability that any given human or any fixed human gets bit by any fixed infected. So we'll start with that. And then we have to multiply that by the number of non-infected, the number of humans. So I'll call that H. And then we also have to multiply that by the number of infected. So I'll call that Z. So that means that's the expected number of new infected people in a day can be maybe generally modeled as 1 over 48 times h times z. Where, let's maybe introduce some notation. So h is the current population of humans 
and Z is the current population of infected. Okay, great. But this expected number of infect new infected a day is like the change in Z. But the change in Z is like the derivative of Z. So that means we have the derivative of the population of the infected. In other words, Z prime is in fact equal to one over 48 times Z times H. But let's notice that the total population is never changing. And that's because once someone gets bit, they turn from a human to an infected. And so you're never losing population. So that means we could in fact write this as one over 48 times Z times the total population, which I'll call P minus Z. Given that, like I said, the total population is never changing. So that means H plus Z is always that total population, which I'll call P. So let's see the summary that we have. We have Z prime is equal to one over 48 times, like we said before, Z times P minus Z. But I think that's a differential equation we can solve. And if we can solve this differential equation, then we can get our hands around the spread of this infection. Okay, well, I think my time at this safe spot is running out. So I'll meet you back at the super safe house. I'm finally back to my safe house, and I know now that I'll be safe for a while. So let's summarize what we've seen so far. So we're trying to model the spread of this infection. We had H was the population of non-infected humans, Z was the population of infected, and then we assumed that the total population did not change. And over the short term, that seems to be a good assumption. So we have H plus Z equals P, that's the total population. Then we built a differential equation out of all of those parts. And we had Z prime equals R times Z times P minus Z, where R in our case was one over 48, which we determined by a little game based on my route from one safe space to another. But more generally, that's the growth rate. So that's gonna depend on a number of factors if you're doing this in general. And I'd like to point out that this is known as the logistics model or the the logistics differential equation. So now to finish this off, I'd like to solve this differential equation. So let's notice it's separable. So we'll solve it using separation of variables. So we can write dz by dt equals r times z times p minus z. And then moving some things around, we get dz over z times p minus z equals r dt. And so we're abusing notation here, but this is the typical way to do this when we're talking about separation of variables. And it's not problematic because you can also do it more carefully and get the same sort of solution. Now we'll integrate both sides, the left-hand side with respect to z and then the right-hand side with respect to T. So that means we're gonna need a partial fraction decomposition over on the left. So maybe we can take one over Z times P minus Z and rewrite it as A over Z plus B over P minus Z. So multiplying through to clear the denominators, we'll have one equals A times P minus Z plus B times Z. So we're left with something like that. 
Okay, so now let's notice if we set z equal to zero, we'll see that we get a equals one over p. And then if we set z equal to p, we'll see that we get b is also one over p. So that's good. That means that we can write this left-hand side after maybe setting up the antiderivative as the antiderivative of one over z plus one over p minus z dz. And then we can maybe just go ahead and take the antiderivative of the right hand side. That'll give us r times t plus some constant. Now taking the antiderivative of this left hand side will give us 1 over p and then we'll have the natural log of z and then minus the natural log of p minus z. And then we have that equals rt plus c. But maybe I'll take this and I'll multiply both sides by p just to simplify. So we have rp times t plus our constant c. I'll absorb that p, which is just a number, into the constant. Now I can use logarithm rules to rewrite this as the ln of z over p minus z is equal to r times p uh, times t plus c. And then we can exponentiate both sides and we'll end up with z over p minus z equals some new constant times e to the r p of t, where I took advantage of renaming the constant as well as exponent rules to simplify that right hand side. Okay, so now we're almost there to having a closed form for the population of the infected. Let's maybe do that on the next board. Okay, so this is where we ended up. Now we need to solve for z. But before we do that, let's say over here that we also know that z evaluated at zero is equal to z naught. And I haven't heard any data out of the resistance. I'm not sure what the initial population of the infected was, but maybe you could look into that and see what you get. So now let's plug t equals zero into this equation and see what we get. So plugging in t equals zero, that will give us z naught over p minus z naught equals c times e to the zero, which is just c. And I realized I missed a p here. That is r times p times t. So that's our constant. Okay, so that's good to know. So now let's maybe save this constant until the end and solve this with the arbitrary constant built in just so that it's a bit easier to work with. So we'll cross multiply by giving us z equals uh, p times c times e to the r p t minus z times c times e to the r p t. And then we can move everything with a z to one side of the equation. So that means we'll move this term over here. And simultaneously, we'll factor a z out. So that'll give us z times the quantity 1 plus c e to the r t uh, equals p times c e to the r p t. OK, nice. But now let's notice that we can easily solve for z at this point. So we have z is equal to p times c e to the rt over 1 plus c e to the rt. So we're left with something like that. But now let's simplify this a little bit. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over c. So that'll give me a p here, and that'll give me a 1 over c plus just that term over there. Okay, so that's looking a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to finish this off by noting that c is equal to z naught over p minus z naught. So I'm going to write this 1 over c as p minus z naught over z naught. But then I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by z naught, and that'll give me a nice final form. So we have z is equal to p times z naught e to the r p t. Oh, I forgot a p down here again. All over, let's see, we have p minus z naught plus z naught e to the r p t. 
Okay, so hopefully this is helpful for modeling the number of infected. If it is, let me know in the comments. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.